So you start off with a notepad, a ruler and a pencil. You work out the height that you want the eye to be and then you draw a line vertically and then you find the centre of that line and then you draw a line across it at the midpoint to the width that you want the eye to be. Once you've got the cross to the width and height that you want it to be, you simply use that as a guide to help you to sketch in an oval shape. And then once you've done that, on one side of the vertical line, you draw another smaller oval in the centre of the horizontal line. So you can see here I just marked out the centre point and the height that I want to do there and then I'm going to draw another smaller one. That's where we're going to cut out a hole and once that's taken out you'll see that that's where the light's going to shine through on the eye. So with a sharp pair of scissors you just cut out on the outside of the larger first oval shape and then once you've done that you do the same to the one on the inside. Having a smaller pair of scissors with a sharp tip is very useful. Then you take your black felt and you pin the paper to that and then you cut the shape out again onto the felt. So in all you'll need to do that four times because you need two pairs of eyes, one pair for each ghost. So bending the felt over is an easy way to get a nice shape for the centre of the eye or for the bit where the light shines through. Or if you want to, once you've done that you can round it off a little bit more later which is what I'm about to do, but I don't think I really needed to. After you've finished doing that, you can then hang the sheet over the tomato cage and make sure it's uh, touching the ground on the front and the back at least. And then you place the first eye onto the sheet and you stitch it on loosely with some black thread. After you've done that and you're placing the second eye on, you might want to leave a gap between them of about six centimetres. Then you need two sets of string, small strings of lights and some cardboard. So I find the centre of the lit part of the string of lights by finding the first light and the last one and folding them over to find the centre. And then I take the centre and I take that to the top of the ghost frame. You'll notice also that the strand is not hanging along where the vertical wires are because if you have the lights hanging next to them it actually highlights the fact that it's a cage, it lights up the wire. So I try to reduce the uh, impact of that by hanging it in between or at the centre of the vertical wires and I attach it to the horizontal ones with a bit of sticky tape so that it doesn't move. can see I'm not being overly fussy with it but it's just nice to get a little bit of clear sticky tape and wrap it around. 
makes it much more secure and look better. Okay, so this is where the batteries are kept. Now I like to keep them together so that when you're lighting it up um, you can just easily reach in under the sheet and switch them on. So firstly I like to put a piece of cardboard at the base of the cage and I tape that onto it or secure it on by bending the cardboard a little bit around the circular part and then I tape it on and around. Sometimes I even tape it to the vertical part of the frame as well but just make sure it's pretty secure and it's not going to go anywhere and then that way you can tape the battery part of the lights to it. Um, make sure they've both got their switches facing the same direction and that way it makes it easy for you to feel when you're trying to turn it on and off. Uh, and another reason for having the cardboard at the base is because it makes it easier to move the cage. You're not going to be dragging the base of the wires anywhere. Of course, you already have the batteries in the um, lights there, so you don't want to be doing that after you've taped it in. I'm testing it, they both work fine and I can lift it up without anything dragging. And that's a close up of how the tape looks when it's wrapped around the wire. Now if you're going to dress the ghosts, you probably, like if you're putting a hat on them, you probably wouldn't put the lights all the way to the top but just um, are up to the um, top circular part and notice where I'm placing the eyes of the sheet onto the cage they're between the two wires as well so there'll be a string running down between the middle of them and it won't be highlighting the um, wire and it's a nice flat surface for them to sit as well so what I'm doing here is I'm taking some safety pins, I'm folding the sheets inwards to make like a seam and if I reach in underneath I'll have the two sheets of fabric and I can pin the safety pin to the underside so that nobody can see um, that it's actually there. So you can see me holding it together there. And then if you reach underneath you can feel the edges of the two sides of the fabric. And then you can put the pin in and you do the same all the way up and make some adjustments if it's not sitting properly when you're done generally takes me a couple of goes. I mean if you wanted to you could do some loose white stitches and just leave it like that and um, then you'll never have to pin it. Once you're finished with your Halloween display you could just put it away as is. I tend to like folding it up flat though so I always undo the safety pins at the end.
and that's what they look like finished and there they are with their hats on. Happy Halloween everybody.